Of the great war of the ring, many songs have been sung and many tales told. The names of heroes like Gandalf the Grey, Aragorn the King, and Frodo the Ringbearer are greatly revered, and rightly so. Yet Sauron's grasp stretched much further than the lands of Gondor and Rohan alone. And his forces might have done great evil in the north of Middle-earth, had a handful of heroes not stood in his path. Their stories, too, deserve to be told. Pay heed now to one such tale, which begins here in the town of Bree, just a few short days before Frodo arrived on his quest. Aragorn. Eredon. Well met. And in company with Andriel of Rivendell and Farin of Erebor. An unlikely trio to find walking through the doors of the Prancing Pony. You were at Sarn Ford last I knew. Do you bear news from Harbalad? Yes. Grim news. I feared it would be so. Quickly, tell me what has happened, but keep your voices low. There are unfriendly ears, even here in Bree. Three days passed. The guard at Son Ford was attacked by nine black riders. Stand fast, Rangers! We were overwhelmed, and the enemy passed into the Shire. This is worse than I imagined. I know these riders. It is from Mordor they come. Our folk could not hope to stand against the Nine together. How bad were our losses? Very bad. We tried to resist them, but they were surrounded by an aura of unnatural dread. There is more you should know. After the rout, one of the Black Riders met with an ally. A man of great malice and power. Agnour. As our master commanded, I have stirred up the orcs of the mountains. Even now, I have a force gathering amid the ruins of old Fornost. Return at once, and prepare your forces. We will have need of them soon. My orcs will be ready. These lands have known peace for too long. They will soon feel the Dark Lord's wrath. This Agandauer has a force at Fornost, then our position grows all the more desperate. But why all this force against the peaceful halflings? It can't be the enemy sees them as a threat. I will say this much. There is a hobbit of the Shire who should be coming this way with a great burden. If it falls into the hands of the enemy, it will mean doom for us all. Now this hobbit is adrift on the road with enemies all around. I must find him before they do. And I need you to help me keep him safe. You are my chieftain. I will gladly do whatever you command. I, I'm a part of this now as well. Then we three are of one mind. How can we aid you? We must reduce the threat from the enemies gathered at Fornost. Travel there and do whatever you can to keep the enemy's eye turned towards you and away from the Shire. Perhaps we will have help in this task. Eladan and Elro here were in the north when last I heard. Any gathering of the enemy is certain to attract their attention. Good. You could find no better allies than the sons of Elrond, half Elven. I hope we meet. But with or without help, the enemy will be kept busy. We'll make sure of that. I'd like to ask you a few questions, Aragorn. Shh. Here in Bree, there is no Aragorn. Only Strider the Ranger. What about this man who met with the Black Riders? This Agandauer? What do you make of him? Some servant of the Dark Lord, and by his name, one to be feared. His presence in the North bodes ill for us all, but I'm glad you discovered it. At least now we are forewarned. 
What is it about his name that tells you he is someone to fear? That name is from a language few now speak, but it was once the native tongue of my ancestors, the men of Numenor. Are you telling me that Agendaur is one of your kin? Yes, but only distantly related. While the forebearers of the Dunedain rejected the lies of the Dark Lord, not all of the men of Numenor did so. Many were enticed by his promises of power. Their descendants serve him still. Many are great warriors and sorcerers, but they are consumed by darkness. We know them as the Black Numenorians. I fear this Agendauer may prove a foe as deadly as the Black Riders themselves. Tell me about this place, Fornost. Fornost was once a great city, the capital of the Dunedain Kingdom of Arnor. It fell to the Witch King long ago. The men of Gondor and the Elves formed an alliance that drove the Witch King out, but Fornost was never rebuilt. The ruins remain a place of dread for many. The men of Bree call it Dead Man's Dyke and fear to go near. It is a perfect place for our enemies to gather in secret. Well, it's a secret no more. We'll go to Fornost and take the fight to them. Who could live in a town where it's always raining? It's depressing. never find the courage to leave their houses. This is foremost, yet I see no sign of the enemy. These ruins could hide a large army. We might even now be under the gaze of unfriendly eyes. Well, we came to provide a distraction for Aragorn, and what better way to do that than walking in the front door? Let's be about it. Beware! Goblins! You. The 
I thank you, friends. Without your timely arrival, my death would have been slow, but certain. No need to thank us. We're always happy to kill goblins. But who are you? I am called Belaram. My home is in the Misty Mountains, and I serve Gwaihir, Lord of Eagles. Who is it I have to thank for my rescue? I am Farin, a dwarf of Erebor, and King Dane is my lord. My friends here are Andriel and Eridan. Then I am indebted to you, Farin of Erebor, and to your friends. How did the goblins manage to capture you? I was careless, and the goblins were well prepared. They used war machines to fire bolts that exploded around me. I was stunned and fell from the sky. When I came to my senses, I was bound and helpless, even as you found me. Have you seen any sign of the one who leads this rabble? I saw a tall man, heavily armored. The goblins obeyed his commands. Who he is, I cannot say, but he had an aura of menace, like one tainted by the shadow. Agandar, it must be. You know this man? He serves the Dark Lord. We have a grudge to settle with him. I will assist you, but it will be perilous. The enemy has positioned war machines upon the inner wall. They limit my ability to fly freely. If we could reach the top of the wall, we might be able to destroy the machines. Beyond those doors, you will find a passage and stairs leading up to the wall. The machines are certain to be heavily guarded. We have little chance of surprising the goblins with but one way to approach. I will take to the air and draw their fire. If we are fortunate, that will allow you to gain the top of the wall unobserved. Good, let's get after them. We've reached the top of the wall. Now to find and destroy the war machines. Move quickly, Bellarom is in danger. What deviltry is this? A goblin sorcerer! Some magic. There's one of the machines over there. You face the power of the Eldar. clear. Well done. I am free to fly unhindered. But there are others fighting in the city. They may need our help. Could it be Elrond's sons? I cannot say. But they move with stealth, and they leave a trail of slain enemies in their wake. That sounds like Eladan and Elro here on both accounts. They are likely heading for the Citadel, just as we are. Then let's push on. Maybe we'll meet up with them. I will shadow your movements from above. In open ground, I can strike against our foes. Call on me when the need is great.
Someone's coming. Besting a troll in combat? That is no small feat, friends. It would appear that we are on the same side. Perhaps we could be of assistance to each other. Allow us to offer a hand. Andriel, is that you? Well met, my friends. We were told we might find you here. I am truly glad to see you. Allow me to introduce my companions, Eridan of the Dunedine and Farin of Erebor. I present to you Eladan and Elrohir, the sons of Elrond Half-Elven. It is a pleasure to make the acquaintance of such skilled and courageous warriors. Was it the three of you, then, who freed the Great Eagle? Aye, Belaram is his name. That was well done. But what brings you to Fornost? We're here at the request of Aragorn. But why would Aragorn send you to Fornost? Has he learned of the goblin force gathered here? This is far more than a simple gathering of goblins. We were with the rangers at San Ford when we were attacked by black riders out of Mordor. That is grim news. But it does not explain why Aragorn would send you here. The Black Riders are in league with a man called Agendaur. He's in command of this force. I begin to understand. Aragorn wishes you to distract Agendaur. Yes, that is our mission. But now that we have joined forces, we can do more than distract him. Let us cut the head from this Serpent of Sauron. A fine idea. But how will we find him? He is certain to be in the Citadel at the heart of the city. We must attempt to make our way there. No easy task amid these crumbling ruins, and a host of orcs and goblins will seek to bar our way. If we are separated, press on toward the Citadel. There we will regroup for our final attack. All right, let's go. Just up ahead. We're not there yet. Stay close. There's a mounted crossbow over there. Here, find me. Take refuge here. I will shield us from their arrows and bolts. the advantage for long. Bring down the fire bearers first.
archers have the high ground. <laughs> Agandawa must be within, then that is where we must go. The way is barred by a powerful magic ward. Can you break the spell? Perhaps, but it will take time and concentration. You'd best get started. We will guard you while you work. Been removed. Come quickly, the doors are open. out there invaders how many not many they freed the eagle fools now our presence here will be revealed is this the best your rabble can do they must be great warriors bloody handed elves or some of those filthy tarts. i don't care find them and kill them call out your guards don't let them escape Call my guard and be quick about it!
You should have fled Middle Earth with the rest of your cowardly kin. While you still had the chance. We flee from nothing, least of all you, lackey of Sauron. Fools! I am the right hand of Sauron. I will see your precious Rivendell burning, and your mongrel father hauled before me in chains. You will do nothing. Your plots end here. My work is only just beginning. Do you think you two alone can hope to stop me? They are not alone. Don't look for your guards. They won't be coming. Fornos means nothing. You haven't won anything here. He's escaping! I cannot hope to follow him now. But I can! Sorcery of Sauron! This is no natural storm! I can no longer see him! It is no use. He has escaped us for now. Yes, but you cannot be blamed. It was bold of you to go after him alone. Indeed, though, perhaps it was not the wisest course. He summoned a storm! How can a man wield such power? Sauron is a master of dark sorcery. He has taught these arts to mortals before. It may be that Agandar learned at the hand of the Dark Lord himself. It is worse than Agandar alone. We faced orcs in the ruins below that cast spells against us. Never before have I encountered orcs who use sorcery. This could mean Agandar has passed his knowledge on to others. Even to the orcs. That would be a great evil, even for one such as he. We've got to find out where he's heading. Any ideas? It is difficult to say. It might be anywhere. The Ettenmoors, Wilderland, the far north. He may even return to Mordor. That seems unlikely. He made threats against the north. Yes, you are correct. And I fear he has the means to carry out those threats. So what should we do now? For my part, I would gladly join in a hunt for Agandar. Yet, I have my duty to consider. I must return home to inform Lord Gwaihir of all I have learned here. And who is Gwaihir? He is the Lord of the Eagles of the Misty Mountains. I am surprised you do not know the name, for he was a friend to your kinsman, Thorin Oakenshield, and to your own lord, Dane Ironfoot. Oh, I. The King of the Eagles is indeed a revered friend of my people. As his vassal, I am duty-bound to return to him. He must be informed of everything I have learned here. Your duty to your people must come first. Good luck to you, Bellaron. Yes. Farewell, wherever you fare. Till your Aerie receives you at your journey's end. My thanks! Commend me to Elrond, your father, and farewell. As for us, I believe we also have a duty to inform our allies of all we have learned. For me, that means a return to Sanford. Halbarad, my captain, will be eager to hear our news. Yes, we cannot say what forces still threaten the Shire. The Rangers may have need of us. Should you find Halbarad has no pressing need of your services, I would urge you to make your way to Imladris. We may have need of your strength and resourcefulness before long. But what about Aragorn and the hobbit he was looking for? He's probably got his hands full with the Black Riders and all. Shouldn't we try to help them? If Aragorn has found this hobbit, it is certain they will both be bound for Imlantris. He is several days ahead of us now. We shall look for him as we go, but Aragorn is resourceful. I suspect he will arrive at Imlantris before we do. I do not know this place, Imlantris. Ah, your pardon. You know it better as Rivendell.
There are still some goblin skulls down below in need of cracking. Shouldn't we deal with them? Goblins are only a threat when they have a strong leader to drive them on. With their chieftain slain and Agandar fled, those few who remain in Fornost will soon fall to squabbling among themselves. And we may find more important tasks awaiting us elsewhere. Then we best head back to Sarnport. Farewell for now. I have received word through the Sons of Elrond and the Wandering Companies telling of your valor at Fornost. You are to be commended for your skill and daring. I think we managed to keep the enemy brushed back a bit, but how have things been here since we left to find Aragorn? All has been quiet. There was an alarm sounded at Buckland shortly after we parted company, but it seems to have amounted to nothing. Have you heard anything of Aragorn? He was desperate to find a certain hobbit when we parted from him in Bree. All I know is that Aragorn is rumored to have left Bree in the company of four hobbits of the Shire. I can only assume one of them is the hobbit he was seeking, and that they are now bound for Rivendell. There is worse news, however. On the night before they departed, the Prancing Pony Inn came under attack by unknown assailants. We return to offer you what help we may. How can we best be of service? Truthfully, I would be happy for the extra hands. But it is clear to me that you three have a greater destiny. You may be needed more urgently elsewhere. Then what would you have us do? I advise you to make your way to Rivendell. Aragorn will be eager to hear news of Agendaur, and he may have other tasks for you to perform. For now, the enemy seems to have turned away from the Shire. These Black Riders, the Nazgul, They've come a long way from Mordor. Aragorn hinted something big drew them here. Maybe you could tell us more? I do know why they're here. But it is not for me to pass that knowledge on to others. Perhaps Aragorn or Elrond will tell you more when you reach Rivendell. Me? Travel to Rivendell? Hmm. The hospitality of Elrond is legendary. And it's not like I have a better suggestion. Why not? But it's a long road between here and there. We best get started. Perhaps there is something you can do for me on your way. You have but to name it. I sent two of my rangers, Kalarin and Lewin, on patrol along the Brandywine River. They should have returned long before now. I am growing concerned for them. They are both seasoned rangers who have served many years in this region. We can be certain they have not simply lost their way. From which direction would you expect them to come? They were to follow the Brandywine north as far as the Great East Road, and from there to make their way back by passing through the Barrow Downs. The Downs are just north of our position here. Then we'll make our way north by way of the Barrow Downs. Perhaps we will discover some trace of them as we travel. You have my thanks. Eridan has great skill as a tracker. If Lewin and Kalaran made it as far as the Downs, he will likely pick up their trail. Farewell and safe travels to you all. I'm told the Barrow Downs are filled with ancient tombs. What do you know of them, Elf? These tombs were made by the fathers of men in the depths of time. They were sacred to the men of Arnor, and they too buried their dead here, until their kingdom fell to the Witch King. These hills have an evil reputation in the folklore of the Shire and Bree, but rangers travel here often without incident. Still, I feel a sense of unease. We must stay alert. Deeper into the downs. Then we should follow. Either way, 
Excellent. A store of goods left for the aid of a ranger in need.
side's right. And they mark off on the battle here as well. And look here. A broken shot of a ranger's sword. I know this place. I belong to Kalar. This is proof your comrades were here. And where are they now? The tracks show where two bodies were dragged to the entrance of that large barrow. Were they living or dead? That I cannot say. Can you hear me, Lewin? Awake! No strength can prevail against this sickness. What good are swords in the face of this plague? What, what, what in the name of... Eredan? Yes, it's me, my friend. I... have been dreaming. As you awoke, you said something about a plague. What did you mean? I... I don't know. It was as if I was someone else. I remember a... Plague and despair. The Great Plague. Nearly 300 years ago, it devastated the Dunedain of this region. You were sharing the dreams of those for whom this tomb was made. Well, let those dreams remain with the dead. I want no more of them. How did you end up in this borough? I recall we were making good speed through the Downs, eager to return to our friends. But a fog began to rise and it became hard to find our way. We began to hear voices calling to us, as if from far off, or else underground. And then, the dead were all around us. We, we fought them, but then I felt the presence of something else, something stronger, more evil. I saw a shadowy figure seize hold of Kalaran, and he fell senseless. Then it came for me. That is all I remember. But if I was brought living into this tomb, and the same would be true for Kalaran. We need to find him. That's what we intend to do. Are you strong enough to join us? Yes. I think I can keep up with you. Let's go before any more dead things decide to turn up. It's Kalaran!
sorry about what happened to your comrade, Luton. Are you going to be all right? First Black Riders, now Barrow Whites? This is more than men should have to contend with. <sighs> but where there is life, there is hope. Thanks for your concern, but I will be all right. I owe it to those who have fallen to go on as best I may. You've been through a lot. Maybe you should come with us to Rivendell. Or we can take you to Bree. It's not far away. No, I, I feel my strength returning. I'll soon be myself again. And then I will bear Kalaran's body away from these tainted tombs. He should be buried with the rest of his brothers who fell at Sarnford. That's a noble mission. I hope he can rest in peace now. Farewell. Master Elrond, allow me to present to you Farin of Erebor, a very valiant dwarf. Indeed. It is an honor to welcome one so brave to my home, and your companions as well. I am grateful for what you did at Fornost. If Agandar's forces had joined in the hunt, there is little chance that I and my charges would have made it here to safety. My thanks. Are you the lord of these halls? Yes, I am Elrond Half-Elven, Lord of the Refuge of Imladris, or as you know it, Rivendell. Half-Elven? Are there men in your heritage, then? Both my sire, Earendil, and my mother, Elwing, had fathers who were of the Edain, the most noble of the men of old. They and their descendants are called the Perenthil, which means the Half-Elven. Are you then of mortal kind, like other men? To each of the Parathil is given a choice, whether to become mortal or to accept the life of the Eldar, the Elves. Long ago, I chose to be counted among Elven kind. My own children will face this choice as well. I'll admit I'm surprised a dwarf can find so warm a welcome in the hall of an Elf Lord. Conflicts there have been between our folk in the past, but you are one of the trusty folk of Durin's line. More often than not, your people and mine have been allies and friends. I'm glad to see you made it here in one piece, Aragorn. But I still have no idea why your mission was so urgent. I think it is time we told our newfound friends what they have gotten themselves into. Gandalf! I should have known you would be involved with this somehow. Indeed. Wherever there is trouble and strife, and the enemy is stirring, there you will find Gandalf the Grey. I believe I have begun to glimpse the truth, yet I would gladly hear your explanation, Mithrandir. You have more than earned such an explanation. Tell me, what do you know of Isildur's Bane? Isildur's Bane? Isn't that another name for the Ring of Power? Quite right. The Ring of Power. The One Ring. The Ruling Ring. After lying lost and nearly forgotten for centuries, Sauron's Ring has once again been found. Do you mean to say the Hobbit Aragorn rescued has come into possession of the Dark Lord's Ring? Aye, that would explain those accursed Black Riders. But what is to become of the Ring now? There is no safe resting place for the ring, not even here in Imladris. It is a danger to all who come near to it. There is only one course left to us. The ring must be destroyed. To do so, the ring will need to be cast into the same fires from which it was forged. Those of Mount Doom, in the land of Mordor. The hobbit, Frodo Baggins, has agreed to take it there. It cannot be that you will send a halfling alone and unaided into Mordor. No, certainly not. A fellowship will be formed. A fellowship of nine. Nine walkers set against Sauron's nine black riders. Among this fellowship will be representatives of all the free peoples of the world. 
Elves, dwarves, and men. Pedagorn and I will both be going. We've proven we can handle a fight. Let us join this fellowship of yours. The hope of the Company of the Ring lies in speed and secrecy, not in strength of arms. Their number must be few. Even were we to send a thousand such warriors on this journey, it would do little more than arouse the wrath of the Dark Lord. We are at your command. Tell us what we can do. The Nazgul and Agandaur are dire threats. We must learn all we can of their movements before the Fellowship is to depart. Scouts will be sent out in every direction to scour the lands around Rivendell. Your aid in this would be of great service to our cause. Very well. Where should we start? Agandaur is our chief concern. Although the Nazgul are powerful foes, their mission here in the north is abundantly clear. We can only guess what Agandaur may be planning, or where he went after he escaped from you. I suspect he may be planning to move against us here. Sauron's hatred of the Elves is very great, and he does not forget the hand we played in his defeat during the War of the Last Alliance. If it is strength he wants, he may well find it among the Ettenmoors. You know that region better than I. What can you tell me of the Ettenmoors? The Ettenmoors are a spur of the Misty Mountains, lying almost directly north of Rivendell. It is a wild region of very rugged terrain, home to many trolls and giants. I myself was in the Ettenmoors but days ago. I saw no sign of Agandaur's presence, but neither did I encounter trolls. That fact alone is troubling. It could be that they are gathering in force, somewhere among the moors. If that's so, we don't want them taking us by surprise. We'll make our way to the Ettenmoors and see what we can find out. From what I have heard of you, from Aragorn and Elrond's sons, I expected no less. Still, you have had a long road and hard fighting to get this far. Take what time you need to rest and recover before you set out. The Ettenmoors are a dangerous place for the unprepared. The hospitality of my house is yours for as long as you wish. Ah, Farin. It is good of you to seek me out. You are a stout dwarf, like all of Durin's folk. And your courageous deeds have shown your worth. What's Agandaur after? There are no mighty kingdoms to be found on this side of the Misty Mountains. What's Sauron afraid of here? Sauron seeks dominion over all of Middle-earth. His desire is to order all things as he sees fit. Even were these lands empty from here to the sea, still he would seek to control them. There is power in Rivendell that could stand against him when all others fall, for a time. And this is something Sauron cannot allow. We had one of the great eagles lend us a hand, at Claw, at Fornost. Right handy he was too. I was thinking he might help us get rid of the ring. I don't fault you for thinking along those lines. Why not beg a ride from an eagle, fly far out to the west, and drop the ring into the deepest part of the sea? Such ideas were debated at Elrond's council. But there are many things in the deep waters, and seas and lands may change. We cannot think of our time alone. We must destroy this thing forever. A hobbit wouldn't be a burden to an eagle. Send them straight to Mount Doom, and problem solved. Indeed. So simple as that. You think so mighty a creature as one of the great eagles could simply waft into Mordor and escape the eye that never sleeps? No. Not all the eagles of the Misty Mountains could stand against Sauron and the full power of his ringwraiths. It would be folly. Nor, for that matter, do the great eagles take orders from us. Yes, yes, sorry. I was just thinking about poor Frodo as all, and wishing there were some way he could be spared a trip into the very heart of the enemy's Black Realm. You have a good heart, and I wish it could be so. We debated many such notions. I had even given thought to dragons. There was a time when dragon fire could destroy a ring of power. But even if the mightiest of the dragons of old, and Caligon the Black, were alive today, his fire would not be enough to consume the One Ring. 
Sauron's ring. No, there is no other way. Frodo must go to Mount Doom. And you have a foe of your own you must contend with. Agendauer. And there is no telling what allies and powers he is gathering. I have things that need doing. Goodbye, Gandalf. It is long since so many dwarves have graced the halls of Imladris. Who might you be? Gimli, son of Glowen, at your service. I've heard your name spoken with great praise. That was fine work you did at Fornost. Not bad at all for one of Thranduil's folk, who are more accustomed to stealth in the forest than open battle. But after all, you had the help of my kinsman, Farin. I heard he played a valiant part. <laughs> and so he did. But your wits fail you, Gimli, son of Glowing, if you cannot tell a wood elf from a member of Elrond's house. Ah, well, no offense meant, but there are Mirkwood elves about in the halls, and they are the kind most familiar to me, being our neighbors and allies. Any elf of Elrond's house is a friend of mine and my kin. I am honored to be a guest here amongst the wise. Thorin spoke no word of more kin following him. What brings you such a distance to Imladris? Aye, it's a long march from the halls of Erebor, but grim news goes on swift feet. It was for Bilbo's sake we came, with a warning that the servants of Sauron wished to find him and his ring. Thrice a black rider came to the front gate of Erebor, demanding news of Bilbo, and threatens to return once more. Ere that should happen, King Dane sent my father, Glowen, to seek the advice of Elrond. You've heard the results of the council? I see you have. I have sworn to protect Frodo upon his quest, an oath I will fulfill though all the orcs of Middle-earth stand in my way. When you speak of a Black Rider, my mind is filled with the horror of the Nazgul. Was it such a fell messenger that came to your door? Not one of the Nazgul, I think, but it was a fell servant all the same, who spoke in a voice like the hissing of snakes. What sort of man can serve the enemy willingly, even gladly, is beyond my understanding. More cruel than any orc he struck me, full of venom and lies. You could well be describing Agandar, for he is such a servant. Could it be so? Perhaps. It is enough that we will not be deceived by promises from Mordor ever again. The only way the Dark Lord gets his ring back this time is when it's tossed into the fires of Mount Doom. What do you know of Frodo? I know only that he is Bilbo's adopted heir, and that he has chosen of his own free will to bear and destroy the ring. That's all I need to know. I'll protect him to my final breath if need be. I have heard much about Erebor from Bilbo. Were you there at the downfall of Smaug? Sadly, no. I was far to the west in the Blue Mountains where I was born, for my father deemed me too young to join him on Thorin's quest. But once the dragon was destroyed, I hurried with many of my kin to settle there. I've labored some seventy years to restore what was lost and helped build anew the city of Dale from the ruins of the dragon fire. I've seen the bones of Smaug upon the lake bottom where he fell. Did you know that Bilbo exchanged riddles with the dragon? Now that's a tale he should tell you. We owe much to that fine old hobbit. Elrond has tasked us with a mission to scout the Ettenmoors. But what is it that worries you about the North? I like not what I've heard of this Agandar you drove from Fornost. He could yet cause grief untold. There are rumors of gatherings of orcs, goblins, and other deadly foes growing in strength. When the Dark Lord strikes, there will be more than one land that feels his wrath. I fear for the Shire and Rivendell. It would ease my heart to know that you'll look to the defense of the North for as long as you're needed. With help from Farron, of course. Whatever Aradan and I, and the most esteemed Farron can do, we shall do. You have my promise. Nothing calls to my heart like this, my home, unless perhaps the sea. Hello, you are Andriel, aren't you? I was hoping I would get a chance to speak with you. 
And you are Frodo Baggins. Aragorn and Gandalf have told me about you. And your burden. Likewise, they have told me all about you. I wanted to thank you and your friends for all you did to keep us safe on our journey to Rivendell. Will you tell me about your journey here? Clearly it was not an easy one. We had trouble almost from the start. The Black Riders were always just behind us. And we nearly met disaster in the Burrow Downs, at Bree, and again at Weathertop. You passed through the Burrow Downs? I know what you faced there. You are fortunate indeed to have escaped. That is no place to wander. You seem to know a great deal about the Burrow Downs already. I'd prefer not to speak about what we found there. It is too horrible to dwell on, even here in the safety of Rivendell. I am familiar with the ruin known as Weathertop. What happened there? We were attacked by five of the Black Riders. I... I was foolish, and I put on the ring. One of them wounded me before Aragorn managed to drive them away. The knife that was used against me left a shard in the wound. From what Gandalf has told me, the fragment was working its way inward. If... if it had reached my heart, I would have become a wraith under the power of the Black Riders. Fortunately... We were able to reach Rivendell in time for Elrond's healing arts to save me. There is more to the Shire folk than many know. I do not believe you will fail us. Go with the goodwill of all who remain behind. Hello there, Andriel. It's good to see you back safe and sound. I've heard all about what you and your friends did to help my Frodo and the Dúnedain reach Rivendell safely. Oh, you'll have to tell me all about it one of these days so I can write it all down properly. The Dúnedain? You speak of Aragorn? Yes, indeed. I have called him that since the day he first told me about his heritage. A remarkable man, Aragorn, and a good friend. I almost wish that I could accompany him on his grand quest, but I'm far too old for adventures now. I only hope I will be spared long enough to write it all down. I am glad Frodo made it here safely. He is your heir, yet he is not your son? Oh no, he's not my son. Actually, he's my first cousin once removed. And also my second cousin once removed. Well, it's, it's complicated, but we, we share a great-grandfather. The poor lad was orphaned at an early age, and so I adopted him. Made him my heir, all nice and legal, while simultaneously dashing the greedy hopes of my odious relations, the Sackville Baggins. <laughs> He's a good lad, Frodo. I only wish... I only wish he hadn't inherited my troubles along with my estate. I hope that Gandalf and the Dúnedain will keep him safe in the days ahead. Can you tell me how Frodo came to be in possession of the Ring of Power? Well, yes, that was through me, I'm afraid. I found the ring by happenstance while lost beneath the roots of the Misty Mountains. I won it. That is to say, I took it from the creature Gollum. Of course, I did not know the full story of the ring until only a few days ago. I thought it was merely a magical bauble with the power to make the wearer invisible. I only used it to avoid unwelcome visitors. Imagine that old ring of mine causing such a fuss. I would gladly take charge of it again if that would help. Oh, yes. Gladly. Yes. You know... I think it would be best if we discussed something else. I must be on my way. something I have not seen in many a long year. An elf in Imlandris I do not know. Welcome, friend. I am Andrea. Greetings, lady. I am Legolas, son of King Thranduil of the Woodland Realm in Mirkwood. Your pardon. I did not know I addressed a prince. 
Yes, a prince. But please, there's no need to stand on formalities. We of Mirkwood seldom do. Tell me about Mirkwood. Mirkwood is the greatest woodland in all of Middle-earth. It was called Greenwood the Great, before the shadow of Sauron fell over it. In ages past, it was a place of great beauty. But now, it is filled with darkness and dread. Save only in the north, where my father's realm is maintained. What brought you on such a long and perilous journey? Unpleasant business. My father sent me to report the escape of Gollum, a creature Aragorn had entrusted to our care. What can you tell me about this Gollum? A pathetic creature who long held the Ring of Power. The evil of the Ring has left him twisted and tormented. His only thought is to recover what was taken from him. How did Gollum escape your guard? Not from a lack of watchfulness, but perhaps from too much kindness. We occasionally allowed Gollum to go about the wood on the close guard. But on one of these ventures, the guards were attacked by orcs from Dol Guldur. In the confusion, Gollum escaped. We followed his track southward for many leagues, until it drew near to Dol Guldur. There, it became too dangerous to pursue him any further. What is this place, Dol Guldur? A stronghold of the enemy in the south of Mirkwood. It was once the dwelling of the Dark Lord, until he was driven out in the year of the Dragon's Fall. But it has once again become a place of great evil. All the darkness that besets Mirkwood has its source in Dul Guldur. Will you be departing for your home soon? No. I have been chosen to represent Elvenkind among the Company of the Ring. I will be accompanying the halfling, Frodo Baggins, on his journey south. I wonder why it is that with so many elves in his own household to consider, Elrond chose to make you a member of the Fellowship. I asked for the privilege. And Elrond did not refuse me. I feel he may have been relieved not to lose any of his household to this quest. He will have need of all his strength, should the enemy move against him Lardris. I am curious why you would volunteer for this. Partially to make amends for the loss of Gollum. But more so, because this will be the final chapter in our long struggle against the darkness. And I wish to have a hand in our final victory. Or at least, to stand in the forefront of our last act of defiance. May Elbereth guide you in the days ahead, Megalus. And you as well, Andriel. Andrael, my Govanin, it is good to see you safely returned. I am told you passed through many dangers to bring us warning of a new threat facing these lands. Estelle speaks highly of you, and my brothers praise the courage you showed at Bornost. I thank you for the part you played in their safe return as well. Rest now a while in the peace of Imladris. It is long since we sat and spoke of herb lore and other gentle arts. Would that I could spend the hours discussing herb lore with you, but Elrond is in need of my skills, and I fear I must leave for the Ettenmoors as soon as may be. Then I will not keep you, but perhaps we may be of service to one another. Your journey may solve a problem that has perplexed me. I am helping my father create a quantity of Miravor, and we may fall short of certain rare ingredients which can be found in the Ettenmoors. In all my years at Imlandris, only once have I tasted the fragrant cordial Miravor. I remember how it renewed my heart and gave me fresh strength. Yes, it is difficult to create and therefore precious. If I gave you a list of the ingredients, perhaps you could bring them back from the Atom Wars. I will set aside a flask for your own use when we have brewed it. If I may be so bold, why is it that you prefer to use Estelle instead of Aragorn? His true name has long been known to you. It is true that when first we met, he gave me his Dunedain name and lineage. Yet for the first twenty years of his life, he was known as Estelle. For he is the hope of his people. And hope, Estelle, he remains to me. In this war, Aragorn's fate is entwined with mine. To share his life and accept the doom of men. 
If our hope fails, the shadow will fall across Middle Earth and leave only ruin. Always he is in my thoughts. Even from afar, I watch over him and keep hope alive in my heart. I have not heard how you met, if you would speak of it. I had been living with my mother's kin in Lothlorien for many years, and had only recently returned to Imladris to visit my father. Estelle saw me at twilight as I walked in a grove of birch. Even then, in his youth, he struck me as more than other mortal men. Twenty-nine years passed, and I dwelt once again in Lothlorien when he came there, returning from perils on the very borders of Mordor. He had undergone many trials and hardships, yet he seemed as fair as an elf lord when I beheld him walking beneath the golden boughs of the Malorn trees. We pledged our troth there, upon the hill of Kirin Amroth, where I said to him, Dark is the shadow, and yet my heart rejoices, for you, Estelle, shall be among the great whose valor will destroy it. Then it is as I heard. You have made the choice of the Half-Elven, choosing to become mortal because of your love for Aragorn. That is the gift given to my father's line. To remain of elven kind and live forever in the undying lands beyond the great sea. Or to accept a mortal life, both the sweet and the bitter. Glad I am that I do not have such a choice before me. Forgive me, but I cannot see the wisdom in it. Yet you are young amongst our kind, though you may seem ancient to your mortal companions. The years may bring you new wisdom, if you do not take ship to the west before then. Even should Imladris endure this war, Elrond will depart. When he leaves, we will be parted beyond the end of the world. It is the price I must pay to bring love and hope to Estelle and the race of men. I must take my leave, lady. May the light of Elbereth guide you. Namarie, farewell, and may the stars shine upon our next meeting. The shards of Narsil, sword of Elendil. Soon it shall be remade, and Aragorn will bear it to war. Greetings, Andriel. I am glad for the chance to speak with an old friend. Need keeps me away from Inladris, but my thoughts are often with those who dwell here. I would like to know more about those chosen to be part of your fellowship. Who is it that interests you? One elf at least goes with you on your quest. Tell me about Legolas. It is fitting that we have a representative of the Eldar along with us. Your people have been foes of Sauron since before my ancestors returned to the shores of Middle-earth. The elves of Mirkwood are constantly called upon to protect their realm from the many enemies that infest that wood. They are skilled warriors and unmatched archers. What of this man of Gondor, this Boromir? Boromir is the son of Denethor, the steward of Gondor. I had never met him before Elrond's council, but long years ago, under another name, I served his grandfather, Ecthelion. The men of Gondor are valiant and strong, and by all accounts, Boromir is foremost among them in courage and skill at arms. I suspect we will have need of his sword before our quest is through. What can you tell me of the dwarf, Gimli? I have spent little time among dwarves, but Gimli is one of Durin's folk. And the dwarves of that line are trusted by Elrond, in spite of the differences that sometimes divide elves and dwarves. If Gimli is like most of his kin, he will prove loyal and stout-hearted, enduring in hardship and fierce in battle. What of these other hobbits? Is it wise to send so many of the little folk on this quest? We are asking much of Frodo. Until recently, he had never set foot outside the confines of the Shire. It will be a comfort for him to have the familiar companionship of his friends and kin in the face of so much that will be new and frightening. 
I have traveled with these hobbits, and they proved far more courageous and hardy than many would suspect. What of Mithrandir, of Gandalf? The two of you are great friends. Can you tell me something of him? To know all there is to know of Gandalf would require a lifetime study. There is much about him that remains a mystery, even to me. Yet he is a relentless foe of Sauron, and without his vigilance the ring would already be in the hands of the enemy. His wisdom and leadership will be of great value to the Fellowship. You go now to claim your rightful place as the King of Gondor. Above all, I go to help Frodo fulfill his quest. For unless the ring is destroyed, Gondor will soon fall, king or no king. You have traveled a great deal. Is there anything you can tell me of the Eton Wars? Only that it is a dangerous and unforgiving place. My own grandfather Arador was slain by trolls in the Eton Wars. It is important we learn if the enemy is active in the Moors, but we do not send you there lightly. Be on your guard at all times while you venture there. I gather you had never heard of Agandar until these recent events. I had never heard nor dealt with Agandar specifically, but I know his kind. Years ago I served in disguise in the armies of Gondor, where I contended with the Corsairs of Umbar, who were often led by those akin to Agandar. These black Numenorians are a corrupt and wicked race. They worship Sauron as a god, and seek the utter destruction of all who oppose him. Good luck to you. This is rough country, no mistake. But so far, we've seen no sign of trouble. But the moors stretch on for many leagues. It would be easy to miss something in these rugged crags and valleys. Let us continue the search, but be wary. More than one ranger has been lost in these wild lands. Orcs! Here! To me, if you need healing!
Greetings, my friends. I could scarce believe what I saw from above. But elf, dwarf, and man battling the enemy together, such things are not often seen. I knew it had to be you. Bellarom, it is a strange coincidence that we should meet again so soon. I did not think to find you here in the Etonmores. Nor did I. It does seem a strange coincidence, but a happy one nonetheless. We were told the Ettenmoors were dangerous, but the place is thick with enemies. Is there something going on we should know about? Indeed there is. The orcs and trolls of the Ettenmoors are gathering to follow in the wake of Bagrisar, a corrupt stone giant. The foul folk respect his strength, and they will follow him for plunder and the chance to do evil. The giant must be stopped before he can bring this army to bear against our friends and allies. A stone giant? I've heard of them, but I rather hope the stories were just that. Stories. No, the stone giants certainly do exist, but they are seldom seen beyond the highest mountain vales. I was never told they were hostile to our kind, however. They seldom are. Eagles and the stone giants have shared the mountain heights without conflict for many generations. But this giant, Bagrasar, is different. Without provocation, he ambushed some of our people, taking them unaware and striking them down with hurled boulders. Many of our Ares he also destroyed, along with the defenseless fledglings who nested there. Gwaihir summoned his strength to punish the giant, but he fled before us. We believe he has come here to the Eden Moors, where he is gathering an army of orcs and trolls. Bagrasar is a threat to all. The sooner he is destroyed, the safer we shall be. Any chance there will be more than one giant to deal with? I do not believe so, for we have learned Bagrasar is an outcast among his own kind. They disowned him for past crimes, and will offer him no protection from our vengeance. You and your kin live in the Ettenmoors? No, we keep our areas atop the high peaks of the nearby Misty Mountains. We have come to the Eden Moors in pursuit of Bagrasar. An enemy of yours is an enemy of ours. We'll join with you in the hunt for this giant. Your aid would be most welcome. Together we may be able to best him. Every hour he lives, his following grows greater. Let us press on! Ambush!
It is finished! My people are avenged. And behold, here come your kin. My lord. It would appear that you have done our work for us, Belaram. Not I, Lord Gwaihir. Your thanks belong to these three. Andriel, Farin, and Aradan. It is they who rid us of Bagrasar. The same three that saved you at Fornost? Indeed. A remarkable chance that we should meet again. If chance it was, your fate seems strangely intertwined. But be that as it may, we are doubly grateful to you. First for saving the life of Belaram, and now for slaying the giant. Are there more stone giants to deal with? There are other giants, certainly, but none that we would consider an enemy. Bargrizar was ever inclined to mischief, and was shunned by his own folk. Yet I never thought him capable of murder. He must have been persuaded to undertake these actions. We have discovered signs that Agandau has been here in the Ettenmoors, that same servant of the Dark Lord that we encountered at Fornost. Then we need look no further for the source of Bargrizar's corruption. But how is it you chose to search these remote moors for Agandauer? Elrond Half-Elfin sent us. He had a feeling the enemy might be gathering here. I will not question the wisdom of Master Elrond. He sees much that is hidden from others. Yet I fear you have come too late to find Agandauer. We have searched the Ettenmoors thoroughly in our hunt for Bargrizar. Yet we have seen no sign of this servant of the Dark Lord. If he was here, we can be reasonably certain he is here no longer. My people will work to disperse the enemy forces that remain in the moors. We will be on guard against the return of Agandauer. Then we should return to Elrond at Imladris. He will be anxious for news, and we have already been long away. I will arrange for a messenger. My lord, I owe my life to these three. And I too believe Agandauer to be a grave threat to the free peoples of the north. Eagles no less so than any other. If you would grant me leave, I wish to accompany them and aid them in their quest. You ask a great deal, Belaram. I may have need for all my followers soon. Yet I perceive a great destiny awaits these three, and it seems you are now part of it. Very well. I will grant you permission to join with them for as long as you see fit. Unless Belaram plans to carry his friends like sheep in his talons, he will need help. If it pleases you, my lord, I will gladly accompany them as well. I too have a stake in this quest. Let me be the third. So be it. Three who cleave the air to match three who walk the earth. May fortune favor you all. Arminel, Baron Thor, you shall be at Belaram's command. Obey his word until such time as you return to us. Now I must depart. Many forces are at work across Middle-earth, and many events take shape. I must consider what part the Eagles will play in them. You've been a great help, as the Eagles so often are. Thanks, and farewell. You return at last. We grew concerned for you. I fear you have missed your chance to say farewell to the members of the Fellowship, for they have departed. Clearly you found danger in the Ettenmoors, yet you have returned safely, and in the company of three of the Great Eagles, no less. There is a story behind this, and I am eager to hear it. We found trolls and orcs preparing for war, just as we had feared, and they were led by a renegade stone giant. He had made attacks against Gwaihir's people. With the help of the eagle Belarom, we were able to make an end of the giant. That was well done, but this is troubling. Why would a stone giant act in this manner? They have never been hostile to free folk before. We took these tokens from some of our fallen foes. Some of them bear the Black Raven emblem of Agandar. Then we can be certain he is behind the giant's descent into evil. But there are also other tokens here I recognize. These are the marks of the orcs of Mount Gundabad, far to the north. 
Mount Gundabad. What do you know of that place? It is a great peak that stands far to the north, at the meeting point of the Misty Mountains and the Grey Mountains. Once, Gundabad was a delving of the dwarves, but it was abandoned long ago. It has since become a stronghold of the orcs. You would be hard-pressed to find a more dangerous location in all the north. Could Agendaur be a threat to the Ringbearer? Perhaps. But the Company of the Ring is bound southward, away from the regions where we believe Agendaur to be. We can hope that he has no thought for the Ring. Indeed, I doubt he even knows of it. Why wouldn't Agendaur know about the Ring? He is deep in the councils of the Dark Lord, after all. Do not forget, for all his power, Agendaur is a mortal man. As bound as he is to the Dark Lord, he is not a slave to his will, as are the Ringwraiths. Were Agendaur to discover the Ring, he would certainly be tempted to claim it as his own. I doubt Sauron would take such a risk. If the orcs of Mount Gundabad are serving Agendaur, maybe we can find him there. It may well be. From Mount Gundabad, the orcs have many tunnels and secret pathways connecting the hidden mines and orc holes of the Misty Mountains. The orcs can move along those routes in great numbers without being seen. If Agandaur is raising an army to fight for his master in the north, it is certain he will have traveled to Gundabad. The evidence you have uncovered confirms this to be so. Yet we have no way of knowing if he is there still. Perhaps not. But we should not sit idle waiting for him to begin the war on his terms. At the very least, we might learn what the orcs are planning. To walk into such an orc-infested pit as Mount Gundabad would seem like folly. But you have proven your skill and daring many times over. And, too, you have the eagles to aid you. It may be that you will find a way to take the enemy by surprise. It is certain that, were you to destroy Agandaur, you would cut the heart from Sauron's plan to make war in the north. Then let's get cutting! We're off to Mount Gundabad! Your courage is commendable, but be certain you are well prepared. Mount Gundabad will not be forgiving of the unwary. Farewell, and may the stars shine upon your path. Snowfall will hide us from the eyes of the enemy below. Belram, look! Above the mountain! Set us down! We can attempt to find a way into the mountain under cover of this storm! There is little chance of that, with those creatures keeping watch from above. Once we land you, my comrades and I will draw off the beasts.
Another orc warband. What are they doing? Studying the ground? There must be something wrong. Look, there's a door. Someone was here before us. There was a fight here very recently. The bodies. They're dwarves. This one lives still. Well then, come on, you scum. Finish it. You... You're not orcs. Andriel, help him. Use your arts. No, no. Save it. The arrow's poison. No hope. But you, you... You can help. Help my friends. Why are you here? What were you trying to do? We... Seek a weapon. We must find it. Use it. Stop the orcs. A weapon? What kind of weapon? Where can we find it? Dwarf weapon. In the stone. Nordry has... A key. Find them. Help them. Please. Save Nordenbach. Nordenbach? Where's that? It's too late. He's dead. But there may be more like him within this fortress. Aye, and they're looking for some sort of weapon. Come on, let's see if we can find him. delight in marring the works of others and twisting them to their own foul purpose. This is it! Quick climb! Up you go!
mountain is coming down! Aye, a good deal of it anyway, just as we hoped. You knew this was going to happen? It's what we came here for. We had to strike this blow if our people are to survive. I am... I'm heartily sorry for getting all of you killed as well. I don't think we need to worry about death just yet. Look! Daring's beard! Well, this is a day I'll not soon forget. I've seen a few things in my time, but I've not flown on an eagle's back till today. Well, now that it's a bit easier to talk, let me thank you properly for saving our lives and bid you welcome to Nordenbad, our home. Nordry's father, the Lord Gorin, will want to speak with you. Nordry's gone ahead to report on the Gundabad raid and to tell him about everything you did for us. What can you tell us of the device you used to collapse the ceiling at Gundabad? In all my long years of study, I have heard of nothing like it. It was an ancient defense made by the dwarves who delved Gundabad long ago. Nobody understood the qualities of stone better than the dwarves of old. And they knew that just the right sound can cause solid stone to split. They use that knowledge to build a defense against any enemy who might force their way past the gates in their home. But Mount Gundabad has been in the hands of the orcs for centuries. How did you know about this weapon? Aye, it's been in the hands of the orcs for many a year, but not straight through. I was only a lad when my people fought a great war against the orcs, and my father helped sack Gundabad. He was one of the stone workers who found the weapon. It made a big impression on him, and he told me the tale so many times I was sure I could find the thing and use it against the orcs. But how did you know it would still work after all this time? <laughs> we didn't. The whole thing was a gamble. Luckily, it paid off. We are pleased to be made welcome here, but in the rush of battle and our hurried escape, I fear we missed your name. Oh, confound me for an old fool! Bruni, son of Bane, at your service and your families. I'm captain of the Nordenbad Guard and a servant of Lord Gordon. We traveled many leagues over many high mountains to reach this place. I know we traveled east, but beyond that, I am not certain where we may be. Aye, it's east you've come. Clean over the Misty Mountains and along the length of the Grey Mountains. You've left the lands of Eriador behind. You're on the northern edge of the land of Rovanion now. Do you think the Orcs will pursue us? Escaping on eagles like we did will throw them off the trail a bit. But it won't be long before they realize it was a group of dwarves that hit them first. And that'll get them thinking about us here. It's not like they're not thinking about Nordenbad anyway. But I'll let Gorin tell you more about that. We would be pleased to speak with Lord Gorin. Just make your way past the door as you see yonder and you'll find him within. The guards have been instructed to let you pass. Here, sire, those I spoke of. Allow me to present to kinsmen, far of Erebor, and also Andriel and Eridan, his companions. We succeeded in our task, and I live to tell of it, thanks only to their aid. You are most welcome here, kinsmen, and no less so your companions, be they man, elf, or eagle. Welcome all to Nordenbad, last hall of the Longbeards in the Grey Mountains. You have returned to me, my son and my oldest friend, whom already I mourned as lost. For this, you will forever have my gratitude and the hospitality of these halls. Know that this is not something lightly given. For never before have we allowed any but our own folk to pass these gates. And no eyes have gazed upon the hidden lake of Azanzaram, save those of our close kindred. Yet for what you have done, I will gladly lay aside our ancient oath of secrecy. You are Longbeards? Then you are of Durin's folk, and close kin to Foran. Aye. In centuries past, most of our kin called these mountains home. But then the dragons came from the far north. One by one, our halls were lost or abandoned. All but Nordenbad. We alone endured those dark times. And thanks to you, we may hope to endure our current troubles as well. The lake is indeed lovely. Did your kin create it? Nay, my ancestors discovered a Zanzaram even as you see it. We have worked with care to enhance what we found. A chip here, a tap there, fashioning bridges, halls, and tunnels. But always, we have taken care to preserve the great gift we were given. 
What can you tell me of your home? My great-great-grandsire was the first to enter the caves of this mountain, where he discovered the hidden lake we call Azanzaran. He was awed by its beauty, and led some of his kin here. Slowly, over many long years, with loving hands and careful chisels, we created the halls you see before you. Nordenbad was never rich in gold or jewels, but its beauty would move even the most cold-hearted dwarf. That is why we have remained here for so long. There is not a dwarf among us who would not choose death over exile from our home. It is beautiful, and I am honored to behold it. May I ask how it was you happened to be in so unlikely a place as Mount Gundabad? One does not go lightly into so foul a pit. We were seeking a servant of Mordor, a man called Agendauer. Agendauer? We are familiar with that one. Curse his black heart. He appeared before our gates some weeks past, and called us to parley. In the name of Sauron the Great, so he said. If only we had been here. Together with your warriors, we might have finished him then and there. If ever one deserved death, it is he. I dare say he does. Yet I would not tarnish the honor of Nordenbad by attacking an emissary seeking to parley. Even one foul enough to serve the Lord of Mordor. Yes, nobly spoken. But what did he ask of you? He demanded that we yield ourselves up to the mercy of Sauron. As if there was any mercy in the Dark Lord. He lays claim to Nordenbad, telling us if we turn over our halls and riches without a fight, our lives will be spared, and we will be free to seek a new home elsewhere. Of course, we would have nothing of that. When we defied him, he grew wrathful, threatening us with the fiery doom that overtook our ancestors. Too. I wonder why he chose such words. I fear he may have allied himself with the dragon Orgast, who dwells in these parts. With such a beast at his command, we would have little hope of resisting him. There are dragons still to be found in the world? I had hoped that Smaug was the last of his kind. Alas, no. There are dragons still to be found in these mountains, and yet more dwell in the wastes beyond. They may not be as great or wicked as was Smaug, but they are large and evil enough. Make no mistake about that. Dragons are wicked creatures, but proud. Could even Agandar command one to serve? Perhaps not on his own account. But if he speaks for the Dark Lord, even Orgast would think twice before offending him. Ah, dragons are wicked creatures, and their greed knows no bounds. Agandar only has to name the right price. Perhaps the best course would be to destroy this dragon before Agendauer sends him against us. Huh. Destroy Orgast? If only it were that simple. The attack on Gundabad would be a peaceful stroll around the lake in comparison. Hey, if it were so easy to slay dragons, there would be many more dwarves still dwelling in these mountains. Urgost has never taken notice of us before. We rather hoped it would stay that way. They say, it does not pay to leave a live dragon out of your calculations if you live near one. And we cannot allow Agendauer to gain such a powerful ally. Even Imladris would be no haven against Dragonfire. Where will we find Urgost? You do not lack for courage, I will grant you. Yet we know not where the dragon dwells. No dwarf has discovered his lair and lived to tell of it. Perhaps Radagast knows this secret, or can discover it. Seems there is little that happens at Wilderland that escapes his notice. You speak of Radagast the Brown, one of the Astari, the Order of Wizards. So you know him, do you? We have never met, yet often I have heard him spoken of. He is said to be skilled in the lore of all herbs and beasts, especially birds. Do you know where he may be found? He dwells within the forest of Mirkwood, away to the south. Perhaps your companion Belleron would know where to find him. Or it is said that Radagast is a friend to the Lord of Eagles himself. Much as I'd like to avoid Mirkwood, seems like it'd be worth our time to speak to this wizard. Indeed. But before you set out, please accept a token of our gratitude. Seek out my steward, Galar. I have instructed him to open our vaults to you. I believe you may find something within that will be of service in the days ahead.
No one can help him now. And no one can help you. spread his veil of lies no more. Yet I fear this was no chance meeting. If Wolfram was here, it could mean trouble for Radagast. You should press on and find him. What manner of creature is this you have defeated? What a foul stench it has. Who can say? Some beast from an older world, maybe. Bred and twisted by the Dark Lord to serve his most trusted servants. The sorcerer said something about a wizard. He must have meant Radagast. But why would Agandaur send his minions after Radagast? The Brown Wizard concerns himself little with the outside world. Yet he has worked against Sauron in the past. Perhaps Agandaur merely wishes to settle an old score. But it seems more likely he seeks to prevent Radagast from aiding his enemies. We should find him. This could mean Agandaur guessed our plan and has struck first. If so, Radagast may be in grave danger. How far are we from the wizard's dwelling? It is difficult to say for certain. Even the eyes of an eagle cannot pierce the interwoven boughs of Mirkwood. And clearings are few in this wood. We will continue the search on foot. Should we look for you here once we have found him? No, I must find my companions. They are probably worried about me. Together, we will keep watch from above. Radagast has many friends among the birds of Mirkwood. If you find him, he can send a message to us easily enough. Very well. Good luck, Balaram. I don't like the look of this Mirkwood. I wish our path would have led us elsewhere. Why would Radagast choose to make his home in such a place? They say that Mirkwood was not always like this. It was fair enough before the shadow of the Dark Lord fell over it. That shadow lies here still. There are evil creatures in this wood. Be on your guard.
must be Radagast's home. It looks peaceful enough. Then what did the sorcerer mean when he said we were too late? Perhaps he was only trying to discourage us. Trail leads down there. I'm sure of it. The wizard! The wizard? No, no, my dears. That is food. He says the wizard must die. Take him and devour him, he commands. And so I shall. But not yet. Not yet. Let him hang a bit first. Let him await my pleasure. <sighs> Wizard alone is barely a meal for one such as myself. The horror. Horror is a face. Enter the sphere of light and be here. <laughs> Wait. 
carefully. Let him down slowly now. He yet lives. Aye, and he's coming around. Ooh. Radagast, are you well? Oh, what a thoroughly unpleasant experience. I shall have more pity for flies in the future. The spider's venom can be lethal. I have some skill at healing. Let me attend you at once. No cause for concern. It happens I know a thing or two about venoms and poisons. Sinathra's poison could be deadly, but killing prey outright is not the way of such creatures. No, they much prefer to keep their meals alive for a time. <laughs> Just as a farmer might age a cheese to improve its flavor, really. She used only enough venom to keep me quiet. There was a powerful force here, and it is clear that you were their target. Why does the enemy hunt you? Ah, oh, the enemy never needs a reason to kill and destroy. But if I were to hazard a guess why they were after me in particular, I would say it is because of my talent for gathering and sending news quickly. That could mean they are planning attacks against our nearby allies. That's bad news for the Bjornings and the Wood Elves. Maybe we should try to warn them. Oh, you needn't concern yourself with that. As I said, I have a talent for such things. I will make sure our friends are warned. It's the neighborly thing to do, after all. I had heard Mirkwood was home to many spiders, but I never expected this. Are there more of her kind in this ward? I certainly hope not. This was the Spider Queen, Sanathra. I've heard many fearful tales of her from my friends among the forest creatures, but I've never before had the misfortune of encountering her. I'm rather surprised to find her here. By all accounts, she kept her lair in the craggy mountains near Dol Guldur, far to the south. Dol Guldur was a stronghold of the enemy in the past. What can you tell me of it? It's a terrible place. A fortress built upon a bare hill in the south of the forest. Of old, the Dark Lord himself dwelt there. He was driven out some years past. But it seems that evil has returned once more to Dol Guldur. I am told that fell creatures of many sorts are gathering there. Roscobel, my usual home, lies a little too close to Dol Guldur for comfort. So I came here. I have several such retreats. You can never be too prepared living in Mirkwood and all. But do I know you? No, Radagast. But you do know me. Ah, young Bellarum. It's a pleasure to see you. So you are a part of this little party, too? <laughs> it's quite a mixed bag, really. I don't see elves, dwarves, and men rubbing elbows often, especially not in Mirkwood. <laughs> now add an eagle as well. This is turning out to be a rather extraordinary day, really, all things considered. I am just glad we came in time. My friends and I have a mission. And we came seeking your aid. We must find the dragon Urgost, who dwells in the Grey Mountains. But we don't have a lot of time to spend looking. We were told you might be able to help us find him. You wish to find a dragon? Oh dear, is that really wise? Wise or not, that is our mission. Do you know where the dragon dwells? Well, he's a dragon. So I would say, the Grey Mountains. Uh, yes, that we know. But do you know where in the Grey Mountains? I haven't the foggiest notion, really. It seems we were misinformed. Ah, uh, now, not so fast. I may not know where Ergos dwells, but I just might be able to find out. It, mm, but I would need my staff for that, and I, I seem to have mislaid it somewhere. One of your order, Mithrandir, or Gandalf if you prefer, is well known to me. I thought you two would be similar, yet you seem quite different. Do I? <laughs> well, cannot one elf be unlike another and yet both still be elves? I suppose there is no one quite like Gandalf, although I sometimes feel as if I should be more like him. At any rate, I assure you, we are both wizards in spite of our differences. My master, Elrond, has spoken of the Order of Wizards many times. 
Yet still I know little of your origins. Will you tell me what manner of being you are, and from whence you come? That I am forbidden to reveal. Some things must remain a secret, at least for the present. Suffice to say, we are. And think on it no more. We found your staff, and brought it along with us. I knew you would have need of it once we found you. Ah, excellent. Aren't you the clever one? <laughs> Crafty as a fox in your own fashion, too, I can tell. I'm grateful to you. Well then, let's see what we can find out, shall we? My friends might know a thing or two. news for me, little one? Ah. I see, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Very brave of you. Well done, my friend. And there you have it. Uh... Perhaps you could explain further for those of us who do not speak the language of swallows. Oh, you don't? Quite a pity, really. They're rather pleasant little fellows. Always something nice to say. Well, what did this one have to say? Quite a bit, actually. Here, let me show you. Considered my offer. You bargain with what you do not possess, man of the self. I will have your price soon enough. Think carefully before you spurn this offer, dragon. As mighty as you are, you would do well not to offend my master. I did not say I refused. Only that you must first achieve my reward before you can give it. Ah, formality. I go now to take your price, but I will leave men behind to await your answer. Consider well, but not too long. My time and my thoughts are my own to spend. For now. I thought you were off to find a dragon. What can you tell me of the creature we seek? The dragon? Mm, I believe you'll find dragons have three things in abundance. Strength, cunning, and greed. You'd be wise not to underestimate Ergos when it comes to any of these. I really rather wish you weren't set on finding the dragon. You seem like such nice people. These woods are filled with enemies. Are you certain you can find your way to safety? <laughs> Don't concern yourself with that. I've lived in Mirkwood for a very long time. I won't be caught off guard again. Where will you go from here, Radagast? Perhaps I will visit my friends in the Wood Elf Realm. Or I might drop in on a few folks I know among the Bjornings. There's even a very nice family of badgers that might take me in. I will have to give it some thought. Your pardon, you said... badgers? Yes, indeed. Oh, I know what you're thinking. How can anyone get along with a group of grumpy old badgers? <laughs> it's true, they're not as amiable as foxes, but they're really quite agreeable once you get to know them. I am certain you are correct. Good luck to you, wherever you may travel. Master, 
father, he would have his answer in my own good time. Sorry to have disturbed you, Mighty One. We're just simple travelers, that's all. Just passing through. Do you think me a fool? No one travels in the Grey Mountains without good cause. Do not waste my time with pointless lies. We are hunting a servant of the Dark Lord. A man called Agandal. What sort of deal? Agandal wishes me to join him in his conquest of the North. As a reward, he offers the realm of Nordenbard and all the wealth found there. Ha! Ah, we already know about that, Dragon. Why do you think we are here? So, in spite of your brashness and bravado, I see you are not without a measure of resourcefulness. I do not know how you could have learned of Agandawa's offer, but it does not matter. Since you are so knowledgeable, perhaps you are also aware that I have no interest in Nordenbard. What is that dwarf infested bit to one such as I? No, I have my eyes set on a far greater prize. I want the ancient fortress of the Witch King himself. Karn Doom. Karn Doom? Where is Karn Doom? It sits atop the northernmost peaks of the Misty Mountains. Of old, it was the capital of the realm of Angmar, the mighty fortress of the Witch King himself. What do you want with such a place? The Grey Mountains are no longer a suitable home for one of my might and majesty. The oft-plundered homes of the dwarves who once dwelt here hold neither the wealth nor the grandeur I desire. Not even that watery hole, Nordenbard. No, I would be lord of loftier halls and master of the hidden vaults of the Witch King as well. Who is the Witch King? You are woefully ignorant of the events in which you have embroiled yourself, Dwarf. The Witch King is the Lord of the Nazgul, Chief Lieutenant of the Dark Lord himself. Oh, him! Well, from what I hear, he's busy down south. So he won't be needing Karn Doom. What's to prevent you from just moving in? Agandawar. He has taken control of Karn Doom. From there, he plans his conquest of the north. If you're so mighty, why don't you just take Karn Doom from Agandawar? Maybe you're afraid of him, huh? No, do not try my patience, dwarf. I fear no man. But Agandaur is a servant of Sauron, and I have no wish to make an enemy of the Dark Lord. You, on the other hand, have already done so. If you would see me remain neutral in this war, destroy Agandaur and turn over Khan to to me. Do you think we're fool enough to trust the word of a dragon? What do you fear? That I will betray you to your death? That would be easy enough to achieve right now. Accept my offer, and you may yet face Agandaur. Choose swiftly. I grow tired of this debate. 
Never. We'll make no deal with the likes of you. Foreign, reconsider. If we battle Urgos, we may all perish here and now. Even if we are victorious, it seems unlikely that we all will survive. Yes. And who then would be left to face Agandawa? As distasteful as it may be, we must accept this deal. You should listen to your friends, Dwarf. They are wiser than you. Hmm. I can't believe what I'm about to say, but... All right, Dragon. You've got a deal. Stay out of this war, and Karn Doom will be yours. A wise choice. See that you don't disappoint me. And if you are truly concerned with the fate of Nordenbad, you might wish to return. Agandaur is moving against it even as we speak. They will need our aid. We must hurry. Oh yes. By all means, hurry. <laughs> <laughs> you can from there and we will see what we can do against their siege machines what i your places with your people lord go i luck to you all fall back back to the upper gallery fall back here they come against the gate. Come, we will drive them back. Berenthor, to the gate!
saved. I believe so, but his wounds are severe. He will need time and constant care if he is to recover. You'll have that. The best that we can give, I promise you. I'll take charge here. Go to my father and tell him what's happened. He'll send dwarves to help with Bellarab. Orin yet lives? That's some good news, at least. He was wounded in the fighting, but he's still on his feet. Hurry inside now and speak to him. Once again, we have Norton Bader in your debt. Without your aid, we would not have held them. The enemy is defeated, but at very great cost. I hate to think of the price you paid to hold Nordenbad. Aye. So many good dwarves lost. I do not think we will fight again in this war. Unless in a final stand upon the shores and bridges of Azanzaram itself. We can only hope that Agendaur now believes the price of taking Nordenbad is too high. What will you do if they attack again? Then every dwarf will sell his life as dearly as he may before the end. And I do not think they will return. All their commanders have been slain. All their commanders? But what of Agandar? Did he fall in battle as well? It would seem he did not consider Nordenbad worthy of his personal attention. We saw no sign of his presence during the battle. Coward! Sending others to do his fighting for him! Our friend Belaram lies gravely injured. We must help him. I have already ordered my people to bear him into the hall. He will have the best care we can give, for it is certain we owe him our lives. But what of Urgost? You set out to deal with the dragon. Did you find him? Yes, but Agandar found him first. He promised the dragon Nordenbad. But we offered to give him Agandar's stronghold, the fortress of Karn Doom. Karn Doom? The ancient fortress of the Witch King of Angmar? We should have known Agandar would reoccupy that accursed place. If Orgos desires that black pit, he is welcome to it. But Agandar will need to be dealt with first. Aye, and that's why we must go to Khartoum. Such a trek will be long and difficult. And the loss of the eagles means you will need to go on foot. Well, so be it. Payment is long overdue. Agandar must die. I can spare no warriors to send with you. The strength of Nordenbad is all but spent. Yet it would please me if you would take these. They are heirlooms of my house. The greatest works of my people passed down through long generations. Parting with them would be hard. But your fight is our fight, and so I give them freely. Choose what you will, and may it help avenge the fallen. Balaram, can you hear me, my friend? Farad. I am within walls of stone, and hear no sounds of battle. Then Nordenbad was saved. Yes, they have withdrawn with heavy losses. How long have I been here like this? But a short while. Do not attempt to rise. You must save your strength. Where are Berenthor and Arminel? I wish I could tell you otherwise, but they fell in battle. Both were as valiant as any warrior could be. They died heroes, and we'll never forget their sacrifice. Your words are kind, and I thank you for them. But my friends are dead nonetheless. What is more, they died under my command. It is a heavy burden to bear. But what of Agandar? Was he too slain in battle, or does he yet live? Agandar did not lead the assault. He is likely still at Khan Doom. Then we must seek for him there. Arminel and Baranthor must be avenged. That's what we mean to do. We're preparing to head for Khan Doom. Then I must prepare as well. I cannot carry you all, but I... Ah! Ah! Leave that to us, Balaram. I lost kin here too, and I don't intend to let Agandaur get away with it. Yes. It is clear I cannot accompany you now. And if you delay, others may die. I will not be responsible for that. Go with my blessing upon you, friends. Farewell, brave one. We'll miss your company, but I expect to see you strong and healthy when we get back. Don't 
Don't you dare disappoint me. Here, take my hand. You needn't be doing me any favors. The mountain I can't climb hasn't been built. Well, we won't be going back that way, I'm thinking. But you were correct, Eridan. There are no guards watching this route. Small wonder. We cannot count on it remaining unwatched for long. Come, let us find a way into this fortress. Then? I think not. They appear to be men of Khan Doom, only stricken with some madness. They would destroy us if they could. The foulness may work in our favor. Such a place will probably be lightly guarded. I hope you're right. It's hard to fight and hold your breath at the same time. study of dark sorcery. Few can master those foul arts for long. And this is the price of failure. There must be a lever that raises this gate.
vicious. Hackenthal's beast. He will... He will not escape us that way again. You're still too hurt to be here. I can't believe my kin would let you go like that. They promised to look after you. Do not fault the folk of Nordenbad. They cared for me diligently. But when I felt strong enough to fly, I set out after you. I am here against the strongest council of Gorin and Nordry. But they are friends. They would not constrain me when my heart led me on. You daft bird! And they say dwarves are stubborn. Look, Belleron, you can't fight when you're barely strong enough to fly. Go on now. Get out of here while you still can. It is not my way to abandon friends in the face of danger. And much less so, great-hearted friends. Beg me to leave them. Well, since there is no persuading you, at least promise you'll hold back unless we really need you. There's no point in your dying needlessly. It should be as you say. Now let us go on. The enemy will be upon us if we delay any further. We must be close. Stay together. who hid behind the elves at Fornost. You? You are the ones who have followed in my wake, upsetting my plans. Yes, and we have thwarted you at every turn. All you have done is raise my ire. Because of your insolence, my conquest of the North shall be all the more cruel. Such threats only strengthen our resolve, monster. Come down and face us, Agadawa! You have much to answer Witness, for. fools. I learned at the hand of the Dark Lord himself. I am Sauron's greatest weapon in the north. You rush only to your death.
Could you know that? It is true. I can feel it. Like a great weight has been lifted from my heart. I feel it too. He's done it. Frodo's really done it. The ring has been destroyed. Be that as it may, you must still honor your oath to me. Gone Doom is mine. We are true to our word, Dragon. You are welcome to it. Just see you mind your manners, old worm. And we'll have no quarrel. <sighs> Tis a long way home from here, for each of us. Let us make for Emlodris. You will find no better place to rest and recover. You have but to say the word, and we will press on. What say you, Farin? Should we go to Rivendell? A little rest sounds good. 